Hey friends, welcome back. Wolf shirt, same Amanda, reaction. A little over a month ago, a channel called Other Side of the Truth created a video highlighting the accomplishments that Malaysia has made with its battle against COVID-19, a true success story. And I reacted to that video and you guys loved it. I was blown away by the support on that video. And honestly, it was just really fun to revisit my love of Malaysia, having lived there for four years, had my babies there. Then, after the success of some of these videos, there was another video put out by Al Jazeera highlighting some really negative, dark stuff about Malaysia. And a bunch of you guys asked me to react to it. And honestly, I watched it and I was like, no, I do not want to comment on that kind of negativity. I don't want to bring that bad stuff into your life, into my life. That said though, other Side of the Truth has put out another video highlighting some of the mistakes that were listed in that original negative video. And I watched some of it and I really like his take on how he shares information and it's done in a fun, very much, there's always two sides of the story kind of take. I thought we could watch it today. I really like to stay in the light. And so I hope that as you're watching this, you stay in the light with me. Let's watch this together. It has so many mistakes, and so we're gonna pick the top 15 to cover today. Number 15, taking videos and footages of police and military. I, I've got my ID. Look, this is my ID, I'm from the press. Okay. He's, he's, not the area, not the area. Throughout the entire world, you really can't be taking footage of police and military. So many countries, that's illegal. Even in the United States, if you took video footage of the security around the White House, that could get you thrown in jail. Well, Al Kazero thinks that because they're reporters, they're above everybody else. Number 14, complaining that they weren't allowed into high-risk areas of COVID-19. We're not allowed inside these fenced off areas. Now, I don't know if they don't realize how COVID-19 works. It spreads pretty easily. And so if they were able to go into an area that was high risk, they could easily pick up COVID-19, especially when you look at the video footage and realize that lots of times they weren't wearing a mask or they only were wearing a mask. I mean, look at how many doctors who were completely prepared and had tons of protection picked up COVID-19. One of the reasons I was hesitant to react to the original video is because there's so much I don't know, you know, like it's not in my wheelhouse to understand what reporters are allowed to do, what they're allowed to take footage of. But when you have someone like this creator just sharing it in such a simple way, like, of course you're not allowed to take footage in those areas. Of course you're not allowed to go in the high risk areas. This is a serious high risk disease. You, you know, like people are dying in hospital without their families close by. Why would they let a reporter in? It seems so logical when he explains it that way. Always allow comments, but in this video, they've blocked all comments on YouTube. You need to allow people to be able to point out when you don't do things that are accurate or when you do things really biased. But if you don't allow comments, people can't point those out. And I just think as a reporter, it's so unprofessional to block comments. I really don't think YouTube should allow that. Number 12, complaining that the government never is. That's a really good point. Um, as a creator, I don't think there's ever been a video where I've blocked comments. That said, though, I don't really create in a genre that would, you know, stir up controversy. But at times there are things that maybe I've done or said that have impacted people. And honestly, I've changed and grown from it because maybe I didn't know better until I knew better. You know what I mean? So I love that he brought that up because if you were super confident in sharing a video, then you should have allowed the comments to be open to, to allow uh, you know, a healthy debate if there were things that were missaid or misspoke that very valid point. Several requests to interview the senior minister, home minister, and his deputies were declined. All right, Mr. Drew Ambrose. Well, the government's a little bit busy. They're fighting this thing called COVID-19, which is extremely deadly and spreads super easy. And sorry, they probably didn't have time to answer every single question you had because they're busy fighting the disease. So please, man, get off your high horse. Not everybody can take time out of their life to serve you, right, dude? Like, have a reality check. 
Number 11, forgive how racism works. It's a little awkward, but it's kind of true, right? Like, unfortunately, that's the thing. That's what you'd hope from your government, from your country, is that they're prioritizing the important stuff. And perhaps speaking to a reporter who's about to publicly smear your whole country wouldn't be top of mind. You know? Is this the practical reality of dealing with a pandemic? Or is it racism? Okay, if you're not aware, racism was mentioned multiple times in the video. How racism works is where you judge a group of people based on their skin color. And in this instance, it would be people of Indian descent or people that look Indian. And if you're not aware, there are multiple Malaysians. Actually, over 7% of Malaysians are Indian descent. They look exactly like migrant workers that are both legal and illegal. So if the Malaysian government was racist, they would be targeting anybody that looked Indian, Bangladeshi, or Pakistani. But the Malaysian government specifically was doing things for illegal immigrants. And anyone that was of Indian descent that was Malaysian, they were fine. They had no complaints. So this is clearly not a racism issue. This is an illegal immigration issue. And those are different things. To call it racism is just completely wrong and out of place. Number 10, ignoring countries that are extremely racist towards their migrant workers. I've traveled all around the world and I have several friends that are migrant workers. And there are several places where I discovered that people were very racist towards migrant workers. And actually in Malaysia, migrant workers are treated better than almost anywhere else in the world. Here, locals of a different country call legal migrant workers lazy, messy, unhygienic. Number nine, treating illegal migrant workers like they're all victims. Illegal migrant workers have specifically not been... Like, we're not going to get into it in this video, but I think if they were going to call out countries on racism, I'm not sure I would start in Malaysia. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all have access to the internet, right? Systemic racism. Okay? Okay. Law and are working illegally. Even in your own video, you have a human rights lawyer, somebody that really supports undocumented and legal migrant workers. And she points out that this illegal migrant worker didn't do anything and that she can't really support him because he put in no effort to try to be legal. Okay, did he attempt to go to the labor department to file a case against his employer? And throughout this video, you often show that they are victims when they could have just put in some effort to make sure that they obeyed the law and got a working visa. Number eight, saying the jobs that migrant workers are working, Malaysians don't want to work. And it's probably true, there are several jobs that Malaysians would prefer that migrant workers did. But in the video, you show how there were used to be 60 jobs at the market that migrant workers worked. And when they set out applications, they had over 500 Malaysians apply for that job. So clearly, in this job, Malaysians wanted to work it, but their jobs were taken by migrant workers. Mohammed ran a recruitment drive to replace the foreign workers with locals. 500 Malaysians applied for just 60 positions. Number seven, never in the... Isn't that tricky? Like, sometimes you think you're trying to make one point, but in the end, you're almost proving yourself wrong, right? Again, this comes down to, like, had the comments been allowed, you could have had this conversation. And I think it's safe to say that when a person is creating a video that is extremely biased or they're, you know, trying to find pieces of information to support a school of thought, you will find it, right? Like, I think that, you know, that could be said for anything, any t topic, you can get the right people to interview that will support the way that you're thinking about something. So it's all very valid, right? Like when I watched that original video, I was just, oh, you know, I was shocked by it because it's not the Malaysia that I knew and loved. And it was very heartbreaking to watch that video. And then to hear the comments from you guys on my videos, even just with the fallout from that. So um, I appreciate that this channel, Other Side of the Truth, is creating this because it's giving me a chance to kind of be like, oh, see, yes, I thought that this might be the case. And, you know, like a little bit more support and information to back up some of the, you know, incorrect claims that the original video was making. Illegal migrant workers put the entire country at huge risk for COVID-19. See, illegal migrant workers are working illegally. It's in the name. And because they're working illegally, they're not registered. The government doesn't even know if they're probably in the country or where they live or who they work for, and there's no way to track them. And so with COVID, it's so important to track 
contact and trace everybody that gets COVID. For example, look at what China did and what Taiwan did and what South Korea did and Japan. All these countries that were extremely good at fighting COVID-19 were able to track everybody in their country and who had it and who didn't. But when you have 4 million illegal immigrants and there's no way to trace them, you're putting your entire country at huge risk. And putting this in the video is so important because then people can kind of understand why the Malaysian government might be trying to figure out who's illegal in Malaysia because it affects the safety of all Malaysians. Number six, acting like... Exactly. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there was even a clip where they were saying, you know, we're just trying to get a hold of understanding how many people are in the country illegally so we can get a better understanding of how to limit the spread of COVID-19. That's the message I got because all of this is very valid. When you have a country that is so small in comparison to the amount of people in the country and then understanding the way that this illness spreads, I think it's only responsible to be able to track everybody. No? And getting questioned about if you're legally working in Malaysia is like the worst thing in the world. He says his whole family, including his son and daughter, were handcuffed and chained together with other children and the elderly under the hot sun. They were only released hours later after authorities verified their documents. All right, right now COVID-19 is happening. There are so many children around the world that are losing parents to COVID-19 and are going to be raised without their father or mother. And you are upset that a daughter had to sit out in the sun? I mean, if this is the worst thing that happens in your COVID-19 experience, you are very blessed because so many people around the world would give anything to be able to sit out in the sun a few hours and know that their country is safe. Like, I see what the both of them are saying on that particular point. I do have, like, a bleeding heart for children. Like, I can't, I don't like to see children be upset or uncomfortable. I don't like the idea of kids being in handcuffs. I think he talks about that in a minute. Um, but also, like, Malaysia is a hot, sunny country. So saying that people are sitting in the sun, like, it's, it's a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, you can, it's the truth, it is a fact. Could they have been in a sheltered area? Was there the capacity to have tents? I don't know. You know what I mean? Is that the case in all areas of Malaysia where they were um, trying to figure out, you know, who's illegal and legal? I don't know, right? Again, it's, it's a rather skewed version. Is it fact? It could be fact, but it feels a little skewed. That point is really valid and it's not something I considered when I watched the original video because again, you're sort of just digesting what's being served to you, right? And I mean, our family is directly impact impacted by COVID-19 and job loss. My husband is a pilot. Planes aren't really going anywhere as much as they used to. So he's out of work and we've been impacted. So I totally understand what he's saying is like, yeah, you focused on illegal workers who are impacted, but legal workers, Malaysian workers, like so many people across the world are impacted. So is that a fair statement to make? Again, it's fact, but it's slightly modified and used to support the bias and the thought that was coming out with that original video. Awkward. For example, handcuffing children. I really don't think this happened. Do you have any footage? Do you have any proof? Do you have anything more than one or two people saying it happened? And regardless, if children are handcuffed, I mean, it's not the end of the day. It doesn't hurt them. Oh, big deal. I mean, come on. I'm a dentist. I have to treat kids' teeth all the time. That's way worse and way more painful than getting handcuffed. But I do it because it's for the good of the kid overall. So just because something's inconvenient or unpleasant, you can't, not everybody lives in a fairy tale land. But regardless, I think that was pretty inaccurate. You also use multiple. I feel like I might have blocked out that part about children being handcuffed. Coming back to what I just said before, that is terrifying, honestly. I do not like the sound of that. 
I don't necessarily agree with this creator's stance on it. Like, I don't know why a kid would need to be handcuffed. But again, it's like, where's the support? Where's the proof? Where's the receipts? Was it just one person? Does it need to be more than one person for it to be wrong? But like, yeah. Yeah, it makes me nervous. Makes me nervous, this stuff. I'm sweating. You purposely pick stories and try to show things that made Malaysia look bad. I mean, you look at the end of the video, you purposely pick a mother with a child. Come on, that was set up. You didn't pick a 50-year-old man. You picked a mother with a child. Many Malaysians, especially doctors and nurses, have risked their lives treating COVID-19 positive patients that were illegal immigrants. These illegal immigrants got free care, free food, free clothing, free toiletries, and everything was provided to them. And this makes you wonder how many other things were inaccurate in this video. Number three, mixing up legal and illegal migrant workers. Hey, listen to this. And anti-immigration Facebook groups have been telling illegal migrants to go home. Did you catch it? One word changes the entire structure of the sentence, and that's how media can be very misleading. He says, anti-immigration Facebook group. But the page he's showing is an anti-illegal immigration Facebook group. Mm. And there's a big difference between anti-immigration and anti-illegal immigration. 101 East investigates why so many foreigners are being locked up in Malaysia's lockdown. Even in the intro summary, you got it wrong. You're not investigating foreigners, all foreigners. No, you're investigating illegal foreigners. You need to say the word illegal. Oh my gosh, I didn't catch that at the beginning of the video. Authorities have been carrying out military-style operations across the capital, Kuala Lumpur. COVID-19 is a time where you need to be strict. You can't allow people moving all around. You need to be very, very strict because if one person with COVID-19 moves and goes about, they can easily spread it to so many more people. And so COVID-19 is a time that you need to have a military-style lockdown because that's the only thing that works. It worked in Taiwan, it worked in Hong Kong, it worked in China, it worked in South Korea, and it also worked in Malaysia. And in this video, you make it sound like a military-style lockdown. It's a bad thing. No, that is an amazingly good thing. And the USA and many other countries in the Americas have not done that. And look at the results. Wouldn't you rather have a little bit of a military-style lockdown and save thousands of lives, I think most people would be in favor of that. Number one, never say anything. Yes, yes, and yes. In fact, where I am in Ontario, in Canada, we've entered into phase three of lockdown. Like it just, by the time you're seeing this video, we're already in phase three, which is allowing people to be inside of restaurants. Makes me nervous uh, because pretty much every other place that has entered into this phase of reopening without completely getting rid of COVID-19 has had a surge in COVID-19 cases. Without going into too much, I mean, I think that there's a lot of mistakes that happened here in Canada with how COVID-19 was handled that led to a much longer lockdown to um, more people getting impacted and, you know, getting contracting COVID-19 than needed to happen if we had been more strict in how we shut things down. Because it is super serious and I get very frustrated by people not taking this seriously. Maybe their lives aren't as impacted, they don't know anyone who's been sick, they haven't lost their jobs, but when you have been impacted, you tend to look at it a little differently. And when you have that volume of people populating a country, you have to be strict about it Otherwise, they wouldn't have had the success that they had, right? Things about Malaysia. Malaysia is an incredible success story. I would recommend you check out this video or this video. Trust me, they're well done, and the person that made them is pretty cool. <laughs> Malaysia did such an amazing job. I mean, it was amazing to see how people from all different backgrounds, famous and average citizens, all came together for the good of Malaysia. And I think that's really important to talk about in this video when you're going to be talking about COVID-19. And that was completely ignored and completely wrong to ignore that in making this video. So those were my top 15 things that were mistakes in Malaysia's locked up in Malaysia's lockdown video. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. And don't worry, I will keep comments on. And on a personal note, I'm just really, I guess, disappointed that a major media source 
would basically make things that were very biased, very inaccurate, mm -hmm. and not do the proper research, and not even really understand how COVID-19 works, because many of the things that actually help prevent COVID-19, they said were wrong. And if you look at the data and results, obviously it's working in Malaysia and it's working in other Asian countries. And so at a time when people are really suffering and dying, you shouldn't be picking out because some people had to sit out in the sun or were uncomfortable. Let's look at the bigger results. Lives were saved. And if a few people had to be uncomfortable to save a few lives, I think it was definitely worth it. Just a tad sweaty. Also, it's very warm in this room. But I do appreciate his perspective on the original video. Like I said at the top, I was really nervous. I didn't want to go anywhere near that video because some of it felt biased. Some of it felt skewed. And I was very much not in the know of a lot of the comings and goings of Malaysia and what reporters are allowed to report on and all of this. Like, you know, it's not appropriate to comment on something that you aren't fully educated on because that's where mistakes happen. Obviously, that's what we're seeing with the original video. So I appreciate this perspective. I think that it's safe to say that if you were to look at many countries and how they handled COVID-19, I think that perhaps some of the ones that have been too lenient have lost so many lives as a result of it. It's just a really tricky time and it's hard to know what to say to even end this video, but I do appreciate you guys bringing this video to my attention. I'm glad I watched it. Let me know how you're feeling about things in the comments. I know that as Malaysians, you are very proud of your country and I don't wanna take that away from you. I always wanna celebrate what it is that I love about you know, Malaysia and my time there. And I love to hear what you love about it. So maybe to keep things light and bright, let me know in the comments one good thing that you love about being a Malaysian or wherever you're from. Share with me something beautiful about your home country. I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new, I would love it if you would stick around and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I put out four videos a week. Plenty to keep you entertained. And if you like this video, click over here for my original reaction video that honestly is about to hit a million views, which is wild. And down here, I'll leave a playlist of a bunch of my favorite Malaysia videos from my time there. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.